What is going on guys? JT Gilly back with another video and welcome to one of the most highly requested videos by you guys to me of all time, if that makes sense. Today we're gonna be talking about the best free to play tips in Pokemon Go. If you wanna play Pokemon Go without spending money and still have a lot of fun, this is the video for you. Hopefully I can help out a bunch of you guys because honestly, when I made this list, when I broke everything down, you can have a lot of fun and progress very well without spending a ton of money in Pokemon Go. So let's talk about it, the best free to play tips in Pokemon Go. Now first off, before I get into anything, there is one rule that we must acknowledge and that is FOMO, the fear of missing out. Everyone's got FOMO. No matter what, man, everyone is excited and they always feel like they gotta grind the heck out of an event, they gotta spend a ton of money, they gotta get this shiny because they don't know when it's coming back. Guys, it'll always come back. Don't let it get to you, or at least try not to let it get to you because it'll cost you. These tips are some very, very solid tips and I hope they help you guys out. Without further ado, we're gonna hop into it, but if you check the, uh, the time line of the video you guys can actually skip if you want to to the section that you care about most you can go to XP to Stardust to good IV Pokemon etc and you guys can bounce around in there so you guys can always come back to this video and go right to where you want to go to anyways let's talk about our first topic how to gain XP in Pokemon Go I love starting off with this topic because XP is so important to all of us and there's a lot of really good ways to get XP actually some of the best ways to get XP if not the best way to get XP is for free that being said, make sure you guys remember that a lucky egg is going to double all your XP during a 30 minute period. So remember, if you're trying to get a chunk of XP, make sure you have a lucky egg when you're doing the following. So the first and best source of XP in Pokemon Go is friendship, dude. Friendship is the most underrated and the absolute best source for XP, in my opinion. At this moment, you can have up to 400 friends and 400 friends will get you a bunch of XP. Let's break it down. So when you do your first interaction with a friend, you become good friends and that rewards you with 3000 XP or 6000 with a lucky egg. When you hit the second level of friendship, you become great friends where you earn a base 10K XP or 20,000 XP with a lucky egg. When you hit the third level of friendship, you hit Ultra Friends, where you earn 50,000 base XP or 100,000 with the Lucky Egg. And when you hit the final level of friendship, which is Best Friends, you get 100,000 base XP or 200,000 with a Lucky Egg. Regardless of what level you are, 200,000 is a lot of XP and it happens just like that. So make sure you guys are taking advantage of friendship. It is my favorite source of XP and guess what? It's free. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys are out there like, man, Gilly, I don't have friends in Pokemon Go. Well, let me help you out, ladies and gentlemen. If you guys need friends in Pokemon Go, not only can you go to my Discord, where there's tens of thousands of trainer codes available, so you can add people from all around the world, go ahead and throw your friend code in the comments section of this video. Add a bunch of people up and get your friends list going, dude. There's so much XP out there for you. Not to mention you can PvP and invite your friends to raids as well. So check out the comments down below if you guys need some more friends of Pokemon Go, let's move on to the next topic. Evolving Pokemon in Pokemon Go. I would say this is actually probably the most underrated XP source. I feel like people just forget how much XP, because before raids, before friendship, evolving Pokemon was the number one source for XP. That was the goaded way to get XP, and it's gotten better. It's literally gotten better. So doing a regular evolution, no matter what it is, is a thousand XP base, or two thousand with a lucky egg. Doing a Pokedex entry will get you another thousand on top of the evolution, so two thousand XP, or four thousand with a lucky egg. Now again, you get two thousand XP with a lucky egg for doing any evolution, right? And a lucky egg will last you thirty minutes. And you're probably wondering, how many evolutions can I get done in 30 minutes? Well, don't worry about wondering, because I got the answer for you, because I did it. You can do about three evolutions a minute. So if you do the math here, I know it's a lot of numbers, if you do the math, three evolutions in a minute times 30 is 90 evolutions. And if it's 2,000 XP per evolution, if you don't do any dex entries or anything like that, and you have a lucky egg on, you can get 180,000 XP in just 30 minutes. 
Yes, evolving is a little bit tedious, but dude, if you're on the XP grind, it's worth it for you. And who doesn't want almost 200,000 XP in just 30 minutes? The next source, the next best source of XP is raiding. Now, I know this is a free to play video, so we're not gonna be discussing raiding too much, but obviously, as you guys know, with tier five raids, you get 10,000 XP for taking them down, or 20,000 with a lucky egg, which is a pretty solid chunk of XP, especially considering when they have raid days, raid hours, etc. Now, just because you're free to play doesn't mean you can't raid. There's a lot of ways to raid. They have the free remote raid pass bundles in the shop sometimes, uh, or maybe you've accumulated enough coins to where you want to buy raid passes. That's definitely good. And don't forget, you guys get two free raid passes a day. So you can raid at least twice a day. Raiding is kind of obvious and kind of straightforward, so I'm not going to discuss it any further. But yeah, raiding is, is a solid source of XP. And speaking of things being obvious, one of the best obvious ways to get XP is to just play the game and catch everything. I promise if you catch everything on your screen, you will notice your XP will start to accumulate very, very quickly because there's so many ways to get XP from catching. Let me show you. Let's talk about some of them. So to capture a Pokemon, you get 100 XP or 200 XP with a Lucky Egg. Uh, if you throw it in the decks, it's 500 XP or 1,000 with a Lucky Egg. If you throw a Great Throw, you get 100 XP on top of the, the catch. So remember, this all adds up. If you get a Great Throw, you get 100 XP or 200 XP with a Lucky Egg. And when you hit an excellent throw, you get 1,000 base XP or 2,000 with a Lucky Egg. And don't forget, dude, like I just said, this stacks up. So let's say you caught a Pokemon uh, on the first attempt with the curve ball, and it's an excellent, and it's a Pokedex entry. If you do the math, that's a couple thousand XP for one catch. And if you catch hundreds of Pokemon a day, or even close to 100 Pokemon a day, you'll get a lot of XP from that dude. So don't sleep on catching, and especially work on throwing those excellents because as you can see, you can get a lot of XP. Next, I wanna go ahead and talk about streaks in Pokemon Go. And by streaks, I mean your seven day catch streak and your seven day spin streak. So in general, when you spin a Pokestop for the first time in a day, you get 500 XP base or 1000 XP with a Lucky Egg. And the same goes for catching a Pokemon. You get 500 XP base, 1000 with a Lucky Egg, right? Now, on your seven day spin or catch streak, you get a 2000 XP base or 4000 with a Lucky Egg. So if you pair those up together and you got a Lucky Egg on, that's a solid chunk of XP. Don't forget about your streaks. Now that's pretty much it for the specifics of how to get XP, dude. Friendship, evolving spree, raids, catching, and streaks in general will get you a ton. Now don't forget, if you guys are wondering when I should use my lucky eggs, use your lucky eggs on events, especially where XP is multiplied. Whether it's a double XP event, or a quadruple, or a, a spotlight hour where there's two times evolve XP or whatever the heck, use your lucky eggs then. Don't use it in your casual play, save it for when you're going hard, or my favorite thing, save it for when you interact with your with your friendships, uh, and like let's say you're getting best friends, you're gonna want that extra 100,000 XP, so that's a really good time to use a lucky egg. But that's all we need to talk about for the XP department, those are your best sources of XP, and like I said, almost all of them are free. So get it going, get your XP, it's out and waiting for you. Next up, I'm gonna be discussing Stardust and Pokemon Go, and I know this is one of, if not the most important aspect of the game, no matter what level you are or how much you play, everyone loves and everyone needs Stardust. So let's talk about how to stack up on Stardust as a free-to-play player. Again, remember that using a star piece for 30 minutes, you'll get 50% more Stardust than you would when you're getting Stardust. So use a star piece when you're doing what I'm about to tell you. First thing I wanna talk about, I think a really underrated way to get Stardust in Pokemon Go is through PVP. PVP, I don't do it much, and but when I do, man, you get a lot of dust. Now, yes, you have to invest a lot of dust to be, to be really, really, really good at PVP, but you get a ton back, dude. When you, when you win battles, when you level up, and especially at the end of the season, always pop a star piece when you're claiming your end of season rewards because you get a lot, and I'm not even exaggerating, you get a ton of XP, or sorry, Stardust, when you're uh, claiming your end of season rewards. And in terms of spending Stardust, a really good way to stack up on Stardust is by not spending Stardust. Guys, try not to power up non-meta relevant Pokemon, low IV Pokemon, uh, just because at the moment they're, you know, they're good for you. Like, I, I get it, you know, sometimes you need to and that's fine, but don't power up an 82% IV Venusaur when, you know, you, maybe you have something else that's better or maybe you wait a little bit longer if you don't need that Venusaur at that moment. You know what I mean? Like, save your Stardust for when you need it and make sure you're using it on 
good Pokemon so you can invest in your future and not invest in something temporary that you're gonna regret later on. Here's a tip that you guys may not have heard from this video. I'm just kidding. Catch everything. Guys, catch everything. You will get a lot of dust from catching stuff. That's probably the best way to get dust. It takes longer, yes, but the more you catch, the more you get. So make sure you're catching a bunch because the Stardust is there, especially if they're weather boosted. Weather boosted Pokemon give you extra Stardust. Also, we touched on this earlier in the XP department, but it also applies to the Stardust department. Your seven day Pokemon catch streak, you get a huge Stardust bonus when you catch that seven day Pokemon, your streak Pokemon. You get a nice little bonus, bonus right there with some dust. So maybe throw in a star piece when you're getting your seven day catch streak. And that leads me to the final thing I wanna discuss, which is actually something that I guarantee half of you guys, probably half of you guys didn't know about. Did you know that there were certain Pokemon in Pokemon Go that give you extra Stardust when you catch them? The following Pokemon give you extra Stardust when you catch them. They're really random, but it's real, I promise. Paris gets you extra Stardust. As you can see, his base Stardust catch is 500 or 625 with Weather Boost. Think about having Lucky Egg, or sorry, a Star Piece on with that. That's gonna be fat, dude. Paris gives you 500. Parasect, 700. Meowth is the same. Um, Meowth, Alolan Meowth gets you 750. Alolan Persian gets you 950. Shelter gets you base 1000 Stardust, which is crazy. Cloyster gets you 1200. Star you 750, Delibird 500, Shroomish 500, Sableye 750, Chimeco, we know that, 1000, Combi 750, Audino, 2100 Stardust for one catch. Base, not even weather boosted, not even a star piece, so that's pretty fat. Trubbish, 750, Garbodor 950, and Fungus 500. So remember these Pokemon right here, ladies and gentlemen, because they are going to get you a lot of dust, especially Shelder, dude. 1000 Stardust? for catching a shelter, that's OP. Now this next segment is something I know a lot of you guys care about. Gilly, as a free to play player, how do I get good IV Pokemon? How do I get good Pokemon, rare Pokemon, legendaries? Let me tell you. Let's talk about how to get good IV Pokemon first off. The best way to get good IV Pokemon is to catch Pokemon from raids, research, or PVP encounters, or by hatching eggs. Now the reason why those four are so important to getting a good IV Pokemon is because when you get Pokemon through those ways, you have a set floor of IVs. They will at least have 10 attack, 10 defense, and 10 HP if you get it from those things. If you get it from a raid, hatch, uh, research, or from a PvP encounter. So your odds of getting a good IV Pokemon are pretty freaking solid. You have a floor of 10, 10, 10, meaning, you know, the best you can get is 15, 15, 15. So you got a nice chunk. It's gonna be at least a two star, hopefully a three star. Also battling Team Rocket grunts and leaders, I find to be a very, very underrated way to get good IV Pokemon because sometimes they have some pretty rare Pokemon, some pretty solid Pokemon. And don't forget guys that Shadow Pokemon are not only stronger, but they can also be purified and you can up the IVs on them when you purify them. For example, let's say you have a 13, 13, 13 Shadow Scorpy, right? You can purify that Scorpy and add two stats to every single column, making it a hundo, making it a 15, 15, 15. So don't forget you guys can purify Shadow Pokemon and have better IV Pokemon than you did before when you purify them. Very underrated. Next up, a pretty underrated tip that some people still to this day don't really get. Adventure Sync is your best friend. If you go to your settings, make sure you have Adventure Sync on. What it does is it tracks your footsteps when, you have your, when, you ha when you're not on your game. You can accumulate footsteps or kilometers throughout the week, and by the end of the week, depending on how much you've walked, you get rewards, right? And from these rewards, you actually get, when you walk 25 kilometers and 50 kilometers, you get eggs, and that egg pool is insane, dude. That egg pool is insane. The encounters you can get from those Adventure Sync eggs are like Ryolu, Gibble, Shinx, uh, Bagon, Dratini, like, like really, really, really good Pokemon. And the pool is solid and there's not really anything bad in there. So if you really want some rare Pokemon, some good IV Pokemon, that egg pool is very good. And that's probably the only time I'll ever recommend you guys to hatch eggs. <laughs> the next tip is pretty obvious and we talked about it already, catch everything. You catch everything, eventually you're gonna run into a hundo or a good IV Pokemon. So catch everything out there and you will get some good Pokemon, I promise you that. One of my favorite tips for getting good IV Pokemon is trading. I feel like a lot of people are always quick to transfer Pokemon that they're not gonna use. Don't forget, if you have somebody to play with, dude, swap. 
Swap your swap your Pokemon, you get a complete re-roll of the IVs. Let's say you have a bad IV Gibble and they have a bad IV Gibble. You guys trade the Gibble. You never know. You could re-roll it and get better IVs. So it never it doesn't hurt. It never hurts. Now it's pretty fitting that in a video where we discuss how to play Pokemon Go for free as a free-to-play player, that we talk about coins in Pokemon Go and what to do if you want to get some and what you want to spend it on. So if you want to earn coins in Pokemon Go, the system is not that great, but you definitely Definitely do have the opportunity. So if you want to earn coins, if you want to earn coins, in Pokemon Go, you battle a gym, you throw a Pokemon in there, and it successfully defends and stays alive for eight and a half hours. When it gets knocked out, you'll receive 50 coins in your account. Now, 50 coins isn't a ton; it's really not that much at all. But eventually, it'll stack up. Now, once you have those coins, what do I want to do with them? Let me tell you. Do spend coins on the following: spend coins on, and I guess it's kind of an order. Pokemon storage upgrades and Pokemon bag item upgrades. The worst thing ever is not having enough room to catch Pokemon. So make sure you guys are prioritizing buying Pokemon storage. You guys can keep a bunch of good IV, useful, legendary, shiny, all those type of Pokemon. And then also your items. You're gonna wanna have a lot of items on you, whether it's balls, revives, potions, berries, etc. You're definitely gonna wanna have some items too. So prioritize your bag upgrades. Then, Raid passes are one of your best friends, especially as a free-to-play player, because you probably don't raid it super often, but when you do raid, it's important. So when you're, when you're raiding legendaries or whatever, which are very important for you, because legendaries are great, not all the time, but sometimes they are, uh, raid passes are super worth it. So buy some raid passes, and usually there's some boxes in the store that are okay. I mean, technically the boxes all are good deals, but they don't really get you what you really want. Sometimes they have stuff that you don't really want, but you end up getting it anyways. They're kind of random, but maybe prioritize raid passes if you like raiding. Now, what should you try to not spend coins on? The number one thing, try not to spend coins on incubators. There's some good Pokemon in there sometimes, but I'm telling you right now, it's not worth your time. I've been hatching eggs for five years. I've spent way more money than, I, than, I'm, than I'm happy about spending. Um, and I really, I've got some good stuff, yes, but it took way too many eggs. It's not really worth your time. If you got the coins, spend it on a raid pass instead. It's more worth your while. Also, try not to buy Pokeballs in the shop. I would save your coins uh, and just get them from gifts or spending Pokestops. Why buy something when you can get it for free? The next thing, try not to spend money on on lure modules. Now, I know lure modules are great for the community, it makes people play, it brings people together, I get it. Uh, and maybe the regular lure modules are okay to buy because you can bring in event spawns and stuff like that and they're kind of worth it. But the special lure modules, while they sometimes have good spawns, they're not worth it. Uh, and at the end of the day, they're not worth the coins. I'd rather get a Mewtwo from a raid than have 30 minutes of okay spawns or whatever. You know what I mean? So maybe maybe no on the lure modules. Hopefully that helps you guys out. Coins are, are hard to come by, I know. And especially the grind to get them every day is, is not good. And hopefully they revamp that system. But that's what you're going to want to do if you got the coins to spend. Let's get into items. Gilly, how do I get balls? Gilly, how do I get this? How do I get that? Let's talk. So if you're looking for balls, berries, potions, revives, and rare candies, guess what you could do? Open up your friend's gifts. And we talked about friends earlier, make sure you guys got them added up. My best tip is to open up your maximum amount of gifts per day, which is usually what, like 20 or 30 or something like that? I think it's 30. Uh, if you open 30 gifts a day, you're, you'll, be, you'll be fine. You're gonna be fine. You're gonna have a lot of balls, a lot of revives, potions, rare candies, and actually even Stardust too. So make sure you're opening your gifts every day. Get your friends list full, check the Discord, check the comments, get your friends list full, open up your gifts, make sure you're sending them back as well, um, but do that and you'll never, well hopefully never have an item problem. Also kind of an obvious one, but make sure you're always spinning Pokestops and gyms. I mean, they're there for you to spin, it's free, why not? And finally, we touched on this earlier, Adventure Sync. Adventure Sync is pretty solid because if you do walk a good amount of kilometers at the end of the week, you guys can claim your rewards. And sometimes you can get a lot of Pokeballs, you can get great balls, I believe. So you can get some really good rewards from the Adventure Sync, in addition, of course, to the eggs and also some Stardust too. But ladies and gentlemen, that is about all the tips I have for you today. Let me know in the comments down below what tip you enjoyed the most or what you didn't know about. And also let me know if I missed any tips. If there's any tips out there that you guys want to recommend to myself in the community, whether it's for XP, good IV Pokemon, uh, Stardust, whatever, let me know in the comments. We're a community. We're here to help each other out. 
Hopefully this helped you guys out, man. I know there's a lot of people out there who can't spend money on Pokemon Go or don't want to or just want to play for free. If you follow all those tricks and strategies and tips and all that good stuff, you can still have a really good time and still level up and still get good Pokemon and all that good stuff. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. I don't know if I said that, but have a good rest of your day. Go out there, get your goodies. I'll see your faces later.